To predict the presence of soft plaque in the arteries, there's a blood test called LPPLA2, stands for lipoprotein associated phospholipase A2. It's an enzyme that is associated with inflammation and the formation of soft plaque. And higher levels of LPPLA2 in the blood are linked to an increased risk of developing soft plaque and of course future cardiovascular events such as heart attacks and strokes. So the LPPLA2 test can actually provide additional information beyond traditional lipid panel tests that most doctors request, which uh, they tend to measure total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, high density lipoprotein known as HDL cholesterol, and triglycerides. Just by assessing the levels of LPPLA2, we can actually gain insights into the underlying inflammatory processes that contributes to the development of soft plaque and use this information to guide the treatment and prevention strategies with lifestyle without drugs as the medical professionals are actually uncertain about how to reverse the effects of LPPLA2. So that said, continue watching as I will guide you through proper supplementation and blood work if you are interested in megadosing. So the question is, what causes soft plaque? See, the main cause of soft plaque buildup in the arteries is chronic inflammation. Factors that can contribute to this inflammation include smoking, diabetes, obesity, uh, consumption of processed foods, seed oils, GMOs, and other man-made products that alter food. Oxidative uh, stress, which leads to the oxidization of LDL cholesterol, is another key driver of the inflammation underlying soft plaque formation. Endothelial dysfunction and reduced nitric oxide production can also promote the inflammation that leads to soft plaque. So now we have soft plaque which are unstable and ready to burst and that's when cholesterol and calcium will actually rush to calcify the artery. So now we have two things to worry about, soft plaque and accumulation of calcification. And as I mentioned earlier, soft plaque is composed of oxidized cholesterol, inflammatory cells and other substances that accumulate within the artery walls and since it's prone to rupture, leading to the formation of blood loss that can actually cause heart attacks and stroke. And over time, the soft plaque can actually undergo a process called calcification, where calcium salts are deposited within the plaque. Now, this transformation from soft, uh, lipid-rich plaque to harder calcified plaque is a natural progression of atherosclerosis. So both calcium and cholesterol play a role in the calcification of soft plaque. Elevated levels of LPPLA2 can contribute to the initial formation and the growth of soft plaque. Another great tool, coronary artery calcium scoring or CT uh, scans are often used to detect calcified plaque. But keep in mind they are much more stable than soft plaque. But over time, if your arteries aren't healing, it will contribute to the narrowing and hardening of the arteries. There are over 50 different supplements that can potentially benefit calcification effects, but I will focus on sharing the top five items along with a bonus supplement. So my number one is vitamin K2 with a form of MK7 have shown reduced arterial calcification by activating matrix GLA protein, which inhibits calcium deposition in the arteries. A 2015 study used 180 micrograms per day for three years to reduce arterial stiffness, but did not specifically measure calcification. But again, a 2019 study found that 360 micrograms a day for one year significantly decreased the progression of coronary artery calcification by 50% compared to the placebo group. And if you are interested in mega dose supplementation, such as the 25,000 micrograms of vitamin K2 and K7 form that I previously consumed for three months, it's important to closely monitor certain blood markers. 
a dosage of 1000 micrograms or more of vitamin K2, you will want to watch for an elevated prothrombin time, PT, and international normalized ratio, INR, which could indicate an abnormal blood clotting profile. Also, be on the lookout for hyperkalesemia as excess vitamin K2 could potentially lead to excessive calcium deposition. It's also wise to monitor your liver enzymes, ALT, AST, and kidney markers, creatinine, BUN, and GFR, to ensure there are no issues in those areas as well. Carefully tracking these key blood parameters is crucial when exploring high-dose vitamin K2 supplementation. My number two supplement is magnesium has been shown to inhibit the formation of hydroxyapatite crystals, which contributes to arterial calcification. Some studies suggest that magnesium supplementation will help reduce arterial calcification. A 2016 study found that 400 milligrams a day of magnesium oxide for two years reduced the progression of coronary artery calcification by 27% compared to the placebo group. Yet, they've used the cheapest form attached to magnesium, which is oxide. Another study in 2017 did not specifically measure calcification but found that 500 mg a day of magnesium citrate for one year improved arterial stiffness in healthy adults. Again, not using the correct form. And from my experience, I've been using the most bioavailable magnesium which is ionic chloride. It has the highest absorption rate of elemental magnesium taking 200 mg every three hours reaching on certain days up to 1200 milligrams per day coming down to number three vitamin d3 with a 2017 study found that 4000 iu per day of vitamin d3 for one year significantly decreased the progression of coronary calcification by 44 percent compared to the placebo group in patients with chronic kidney disease in addition to vitamin D3, back in 1930 and 1940s, vitamin D3 was used in the upper 200,000 to 600,000 IU per day for treatment for rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, and tuberculosis without any changes in serum calcium, EGFR, or development of hypervitaminosis. Niacin being number four, you and I already know how effective against cholesterol numbers and oxidization, but what about calcification. See, a 2009 study with a dose of 1,000 milligrams per day for 12 months showed a lower rate of artery calcification progression of 4.2 percent. A 2012 study on carotid intima media thickness and carotid artery calcification dose of 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams a day of extended release for 12 months, CIMT dropped by 115 percent and for carotid artery calcification dropped by 6.3%. In addition to the list, there have been multiple positive studies on the following items, which brings us to number five. Vitamin E with a dose of 400 to 800 IU. A 2008 study found that 400 IU a day of vitamin E for two years reduced the progression of coronary artery calcification by 52%. A 2015 study found that 800 IU a day of vitamin E for six months significantly reduced by 79.3%. Now, as for mega dosing of 3200 IU or higher for short term, do keep an eye on elevated PT, INR for blood clotting, liver enzymes, AST, ALT. And it does cause a drop in your fat solubles so do check your vitamin a d and k now and for the bonus is nerokinase is an enzyme derived from the japanese food nero does have potential to break down and dissolve calcified plaque see a 2009 study with 2000 fibrinolytic units for eight weeks did improve both systolic and diastolic blood pressure in 2015, with 6,000 uh, FU per day for 26 weeks, decreased carotid IMT and improved blood lipid profiles. A 2016 and a 2020 study used 10,800 fibrinolytic units per day. Multiple things occurred. Total cholesterol dropped, triglycerides dropped, LDLC dropped, and an increase with HDLC. Similar effect of niacin. But 
after 12 months of usage, there was a 66.5 to 95.4 reduction in carotid artery intima media thickness, short for CCA-IMT and carotid plaque size, with no adverse side effects were actually reported. Similar blood work for PT and APTT for blood clotting, platelet counts, and liver enzymes should be all checked, and it's ideal to cycle every 90 days for one to two weeks off. So based on the available evidence, a combination of vitamin K2, MK7, magnesium, ionic chloride, vitamin D3, niacin, vitamin E, and neurokinase may offer the most comprehensive approach to reducing arterial calcification and improving cardiovascular health. However, it's essential to note that individual responses to supplements can of course vary and it's always best to consult with the healthcare to ensure all your blood work are stable. In addition, I am currently working with 11 patients and have dramatically dropped their LP PLA2 within less than 60 days by 30% utilizing some of these supplementation. If you would like some guidance, please feel free to reach out at any time.